until the word of God that you have heard, until it leaves your human spirit with all of the character of God. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. If that word has not left your human spirit with all of the character of God, if it has not given your mind the culture of truth, you should not cease to meditate it. You should not cease to hear it. And do not forget this. Until faith has achieved its highest objective, you must not stop to feed your faith. And to feed your faith, you will have to keep hearing the truth again and again. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear it, the more you understand it. The more you understand it, the more the faith that's born on your inside. There are different types of faith. There is weak faith and there is strong faith. There is little faith and there is great faith. You see, the kind of faith you exhibit depends on your understanding of the formation at your disposal. A truth that hasn't given the culture of truth to your mind should not be archived, should not be kept aside. So, this is what you have to learn to do right now. Learn to crave a truth that you heard that has not shaped your spirit. Learn to crave it. The Bible tells us, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. How much God satisfies you depends on how much you hunger for the truth. So, never set the truth aside because you've heard it before. There are those who have read the Bible many times. They keep reading it. You know why? The word of God is that manna that's ever fresh. It never grows stale. And you see, the amount of revelation you have of the word of God is what determines the kind of life you live. We have been called to rest. Our rest is tied to our revelation until a truth has formed the revelation. A revelation that has become a consciousness. You don't stop to listen to it. And so I challenge you to learn the word. You, you are supposed to hear the word of God, a message again and again until you start living out the message. Because we become what we hear through practice. As if we have not become what we've heard, then we have to go back to hear it again until we become what we hear. And so let's, let's, let's become hungry for a truth until it forms the character of the spirit until it brings us to an environment of truth where we can't live without it. Make that a habit for yourself. It's a choice you have to make. It's a choice you have to make. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, and be quiet. If you were to come to God right now and lay on the ground and say, use me, and you don't have godly reverence, he will turn his back on you. Listen, the biggest lesson the Holy Ghost teaches anybody is the fear of the Lord. If you don't have godly reverence, you are doomed. You may be praying, you'll be wasting time. Some of you don't have the fear of the Lord. You don't have the fear of the Lord. Godly reverence is what some of you lack. And I promise you something. As long as the anointing of God is on my life, you will not be here without godly reverence. As long as the anointing is on my life, you will not be here and be indisciplined and uncultured. What I have been called to change will not exist in this house. Remember that and write it in your notepad. What Reverend Peter told me has been called to change in the world will not exist in the Gulag nation as long as I'm the head of this vision. What I have been called to change will not exist here. Remember that. And that's a law in the Gulag nation. I've been called to, 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 to uproot from the body of Christ lack of fear of the Lord, indiscipline, uncultured character. And I'm uprooting them in the church so they cannot be here. Then the things to change in the world, like all of those homosexual arts, 
wickedness that I'm, 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 being, I'm being trained and raised for will not be here. I'm being sincere with you right now. So when I come to meeting or when I give instruction to your leaders in your real chapters and I say do this knowing, knowing specifically that it's not for my gain it is for the objective and the goal and you will not do it. Boy, you know, listen I don't have to curse anybody to be, for the person to be cursed. If you, are, if you are acting contrary to the rule of the house, you invite the curse. Because it is the rule governing the good like nation. It is the rule governing us. And I'm, I'm doing everything to make sure you don't inherit a curse, but a blessing. Because the God you call on has rules for the blessing and for the curse. There are characteristic behavior that brings the, um, that bring the, the, the blessing of the curse. So it's, it's left for you to function accordingly. But I will make you function the right way. It's my job to do that. We tell you meeting is 9.30. You don't decide extra minute. I'm being honest with you guys. You see, I don't waste words. When I speak, heaven carries it out. I don't waste words. I'm not known to waste words. I try to keep to myself. One of the reasons I keep away from people is so that people don't err in coming around me. Because if you do, the dangers are always very grave. Everywhere I have watched it happen all over the world. You don't try it. You don't try it. You don't know what the anointing is. It can't even spare your parents. The anointing. Adam was so anointed, but that didn't spare his children. The anointing is a risky thing to play with. People don't know that. And when you are in the ministry where the anointing works, you become so careful in your dealings. People don't know these things. I was, um, earlier today, I was having some meetings here and there. I just took my phone. Somehow, I don't know how I got there, and I saw Archbishop with us talking, an old video. And what was he talking about? He was saying, this man here, these men of God that I say, that are anointed, he said, don't go near them. They are danger zones. He said, you can do anything, but don't come near them. Because you will die. It's the anointing of God we're talking about here. I don't even know why we saw it. It's about the anointing. You need to be careful about the anointing. We didn't come to come to learn how to sleep. We came to learn how to, how to become God in creation. And it's at the cost, at the price. You, you, cannot, you cannot learn these deepness of the spirit in comfort. You learn them with a price. It comes at a cost. Some of you are doing discipline. You, you come in here late and then while I'm still talking, you want to ease yourself. In discipline. Listen, I may have been quiet for a while. You don't disrespect the grace. I fear the Lord. Don't try it. If you cannot be cultured, then stop coming. And your, 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 your decision to stop coming is your loss. You can't be crawling to meet when I'm having a meeting. How dare you? Do we look at the place you're coming from? Where there's no proper leadership? Have you read your Bible? Where a place where people start behaving the way they choose, in the realm of the spirit, it is concluded that there is no leadership there. You know you can kill your prophet the way you behave by telling God that we don't have a head of ours. He says, in those days, in this, there was no king, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. But as long as I'm telling the Lord I'm here, they are just being disobedient, then he will cut you off in a very terrible way. The way it will pain people. Don't try. Don't let God cut you off. Don't get on the wrong side of what I told you that. It does happen. And it begins with you, leaders. If you cannot in, insist on order, then God will deal with you. What do you think it, we are here for? And you know, this is just because um, we, we were a privilege to be born in a time of grace. But what God wants to do, he will do it by all means. You are his own. You don't belong to you. You're only just being, God is only just being kind by giving you a certain level of um, liberty to choose some things. He can insist on what he wants and he will get it done because you, he owns you. You don't have a right about yourself. So, don't abuse the little liberty he has given you over yourself. He can take it. 
If you are done with serving the Lord, use the door and watch what becomes of your life. There are multitudes waiting to be called of God into what you are enjoying. And what did Jesus say? He said, if they, if they hold their peace, God will raise children out of the stone. Because there are always people, God, there's something about God. If he calls you and you start misbehaving, he calls someone and makes him a lot better than you are. That's what he said to Moses. He said, leave me alone, let me destroy them, and I will raise a greater and mightier people from you. So that means in the mind of God, there were, were, were a greater and mightier people. Israel didn't know that. Israel didn't know there were people behind it that were mightier and greater that God would use. The same with Saul. Saul didn't know that there was someone better than himself in Israel. He thought because he was head and shoulder above them, he could act anyhow. The Bible tells us, God sent someone and told him, he said, Samuel, I have, I have, I've chosen a man, a man, his neighbor, more excellent than he is. Saul didn't know. There was someone in Israel more excellent than he is. Listen, there are people out there that God can make more excellent than yourselves to finish his goal in life. So the honor you have, don't throw it away. That's what it tells you in Revelation. It says, hold fast to what you have, lest another man take your crown. Don't care. Don't care. Let's away your place in Christ. I don't care how old you are. At the age of 90, 93, Aaron was pleading and crying to Moses, his younger brother. I don't care how old you are. Is it because here in Nigeria, you guys, you grow too elderly enough? Say, a man is, a man is 70 years old. Go to the U.S. In fact, we are 8 doing Uber. A man at 90 is still teaching, carrying his own luggage. Isn't it why you find that they, they, are, they are heading almost everything? How old is Josh Meyer? Josh Meyer is almost 80. Can you go back in his 80, late 80s or mid 80s? See Ronnie shouting, glory, glory. How old is your mother or father that will come here? I cannot stand. 50, 60, 70 max. You can't stand. Then can you go back at 80? Look at Biden. At, Biden is 90 now. I'll be 80 now. 80. Biden is 80. See Ronnie from nation to nation. At 80, presiding over the United States and the whole world. At 80, how old are you? Nancy Pelosi, 80 something. See, going to China, these guys are still serving. See, want to see bidding for power. Many times, there are reasons God is allowing them there. Find that some of them are more disciplined than the younger ones who are looking for office. You can't even carry the body of your life, you want to be president. It's not just about a desire. There are requirements to meet a desire. And I see why your life is the way it is. No progress and you are comfortable. As long as you get money to feed, you are good. You think greatness is measured by having money to feed? No. No. There's a price to pay for success. The price to pay for everything we desire in life is a price to pay. The price to pay. And we should learn that. The, you see, some ministries that are looking, that we look at today, we wonder what happened to them, why the members like this. They started on fire. And little by little, the leadership lost the vision or took, side, took, took their eyes off the people's behavior. And the whole thing went out of order and it was too late to correct it. They started on fire. If I, don't, if I don't stick to the rule and insist, before I know it, some of you become something else. And, and you become too late to change and we start managing it. No, 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 no. The Lord spoke to me from the beginning. He said, never manage people. Don't manage people. If they are not ready to be the best of them, let them go. So I'm not going to manage anybody. Why? Because he who called me is the producer of lives. He knows how to recreate as many as he needs. And as long as I'm saying, Lord, I want to go for you, and I want to, I want to work with the best, we'll bring them. Don't be careless. And I don't care how, how young you are in this vision. Whether you're just coming, this is your first time. If you were to go to Oba Palace, you'll behave yourself. If you go to the mosque, your first time in the mosque, you'll behave yourself. You won't say it's because I'm new. No, you behave. They don't, they don't want to hear that. You will behave yourself. So if you come here, whether you're invited or not, listen, when you go to a place, you function by the rule of the house. There is a rule in the house. And everyone coming, whether you are new or old, there are rules and you must, you must obey the rules, abide by them. I'm not begging, I'm not requesting, it's an order. Don't come here and, and exhibit your excessive naughtiness. It's not allowed. Are we clear? Yes, sir. 
He says, an elder should obtain good report among the younger ones. As an elder. Elder should be responsible. Elder should set the example for the younger ones. Not a lazy elder. How old are you, by the way? Moses was 80 when God called him. At 120, he said, to run. How old are you? But if you're not even up to half the age of Moses, you are claiming elder. You behave yourself very well. This is, the, this is what I live for. This is what God called me for. The anointing does not put sentiment into operation. Does it doesn't regard sentiment when, when dealing with things. I don't want to, and I'm not going to give them to sentiment. Wife or son or anybody, you, you walk by the rule. We want to give God the best. The past people fade in. Those he called in the past, they fade in again and again from generation to generation. So behave yourself, be your best. I only ask for one thing from you, the best version of yourself. If you don't have it, show me you are ready to become it. And I will be ready to wait till you become but to give me an attitude that says I'm not ready to be anything, I want to just follow the way I am, you can't. You can't follow the way you are. Because you don't, you know, in other places they say, follow, serve God the way you know best. That's an error. It's not scriptural. And that's the reason why they don't prosper. They don't prosper. You don't serve God the way you are. When you come to God the way you are, he saves you. After you are saved, they say, lay aside every weight. Put it away. And then they say, there's a standard. Those he predestinated, they also did pre, those he, he also did predestinate to be conformed. It's an order. So there's a, there's one called the love conformation. You must conform. The love conformation, conforming to a standard God has said. Who is that standard? Jesus Christ. Conforming in everything. So Jesus said, I have set an example for you to follow. Exodus chapter 32 from verse 1. We'll be reading to verse 29. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods. We shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we, we will not what is become of him. Did you hear that? We don't, we don't know what has become of Moses. He went to be with the Lord. They said we don't know what has become of him. Make us, make us gods. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. You still there? And now they will break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and, and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a modern calf. And he said, This be thy God, O Israel. We brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tom Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and both sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, you see, he has changed his name. In Israel, in Egypt, he said to Pharaoh, Let my people go. But he said, Moses, for your people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. Suddenly God is denying them already. Already. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a mouthing calf and have worshipped it. And have sacrificed the unto and said, This be thy God, O Israel, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. <clears throat> and I said unto Moses, I have seen these people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wash out against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Now, I know some of you, when we read, you say, oh, but Moses was able to appease God, and that was all. It's not true. God only said, For the now, I will hear you. But I swear they won't see the promised land. And they all died. We read it earlier. All that came out of Egypt died. God killed them. Why? Because of that disobedience. The Lord kills and the Lord makes alive. Remember that. Are you done with that? 
And Moses besought the Lord his God. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does thy wrath wash hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath, and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, so whom thou swearest by thine own servant, said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the, Lord, and the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto, this, unto his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testament that were in his hand, the tables were written on both their sides, on the one side and on the other side where they were written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery. Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that sing, do I hear? And it came to pass, as soon as he came now to the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger was out, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder, and stored upon water, and made it up, is a drink of it. He said, come and drink it by force. And Moses said unto Aaron, what, this, what did these people, what did these people want to do, that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, let not the anger of my Lord, his younger brother, my Lord, remember that. Let not the anger of my Lord was her. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. Have you seen that? They are set on mischief. You see why the leadership must sit up? Because people come with the wrong reasons, come with the wrong background, and want to exhibit it in the body of Christ. This is what you find in churches. They come in with dreadlocks and all kinds of looks, and that's what they want to maintain. And then they forget that your outward man, many times, is the expression of your inner character. Don't tell me you are carrying a tattoo and it's not in your heart. You can't be, you can't have such a blessed, a, um, 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 a contrite spirit, a spirit after God on the inside and on the outside you're looking like a rasta. It's not possible. It's not possible. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he on the outward. The next verse. Look on the screen, everybody. But they said unto me, Make us gods, we shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we, 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 we work not what is become of it. Next verse, please. I told you we're going to take it to 29. And I said unto them, Whosoever had any gold, let them break it off. Now, this time around, they're just making noise. The report is useless. So they, came, they gave it to me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out the, this calf. Just imagine that stupid escape on his giving. And there came out the calf. Nonsense. You remember how God killed him? God told him, go and die. Get up. Strip him and let him die. God stripped him of everything, and he died. Aaron, old man, that wasn't wise. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood, I want you to take note of some things here. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Look at the next verse. And he said unto them, first said the Lord God of Israel, put every man his sword by his side and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. And so Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell. The Levi took weapons and began to kill in the camp. 
And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell about that day about 3,000 men. They killed them. And look at what happened to the Levi. For Moses has said, consecrate yourself today to the Lord, every, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. Now, King James didn't render that is as powerful as it should be. And then you read another time which I may read to you. Moses said, today you have shown that you're on the Lord's side and you have obtained a blessing at a cost. You've obtained a blessing. You've obtained a blessing at a cost. That means you, the Lord blessed them for killing their brothers and sisters for their wicked hearts. The Lord blessed the Levi for that we did it. I want to show something. You think it's every time we say uh, behave well. No. Sometimes killing is important to put people right in different ways now. I'm advising you, if you want to serve God, follow me to the end. If you don't want to serve God, please leave wise early so you don't bring destruction on your life. And I will see what, what will be better for you again. Moses said, you confirm your ordination today and at a great cost, even killing your sons and brothers, and God has blessed you. And God has blessed you. Did you hear that? I'll read it again. Moses said, you confirmed your ordination today and at a great cost, even killing your sons and brothers, and God has blessed you. You confirm your ordination at a cost by killing your brothers and sons. And God, and God has blessed you for killing them for that wickedness they did. God has blessed you for killing your brothers and sisters because you have gone against God. It's a standard in the good life nation. And I will be placing the prayers, the blessings, and the curses of those that we follow because we love the Lord. May the blessings of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and beyond rest on you and let the nation serve you. And that man and woman that will not serve the Lord, that will not follow the rules of the house, may the curses not written in the book be on your life. And so said the angels. Because I do not see any difficulty in obeying the, the rules in serving God. I don't see any difficulty. We only just being passionate on lawlessness. We just want to be lawless at all times. Because the rules are not saying anything hard. We are not asking you to kill some of me. We are not asking you to give us your money. We are not asking you to die for us. We are only just saying, the, if the law says, when you are late for meeting, you run. Then when you are late, you run. The rule says, when your leader is talking to you, you bow your head and listen. You don't look at your leader's eye with disrespect, as if to say, I'm just respecting you, because that's not even respect. You don't look into your leader's eye. When your leader is correcting you, you bow your head to listen. And when he's done, be quick to say, don't explain. I'm so sorry, Sam. Ma, I'm sorry. I pledge to do better next time. Don't say, ma, I'm, all the way I do good, you don't, you don't, you don't acknowledge me. This one day, don't, you won't dare. In this place, the scripture says you don't answer back. That's what scripture says. You don't answer back. So what if the leader is taking advantage of me? When you leave the leader for God to deal with, it's a greater thing than you trying to be God in dealing with the leader. It's not your, it's not your job to deal with the leader. Let God deal with the leader. When God deals with the leader, it's, it's going to be a worse thing. Don't, don't try. Say, hey, sir, you don't, you don't understand. Since I came to this real chapter, the leader has always been picking on me because there's this sister that this and that. No, forget about it. I have been there before. I know it means to be abused by leaders. We give every urgency to the things of God in the Gulf Nation. We give every urgency to it. We give every urgency to the things of God in the Good Life Nation. And these are just... Um, the lower rules. The rule number one in this house is that we do not place God or the things of God second to anything. We do not place God or the things of God second to anything. It comes first. 
not our ambition, not our anything is placed above God. In the good admission, we do not place the things of God and God himself, or God and the things of God, second to anything. We do not. God comes first. We do not put our ambitions, our occupation, or whatever it is, above God. We do not in the good admission. It's, a, it's, a, it's an abomination in, in TGN. So if you do not know how to put God first, you may not be here. And you should not be here. We place him first above all things. And we deal with, the rule of two is that we deal with the things of God with great urgency. Great urgency. With precision and accuracy. Great urgency. With precision and accuracy. You get that? Great urgency. Precision. Accuracy. Number three is that we are wholehearted about it. We do not give half-hearted commitment. We are wholehearted. We give wholehearted commitment to the things of God committed to our trust. Wholehearted commitment. Not partial commitment. We are wholehearted about it. I told you already, we treat it with great urgency. We treat it with great urgency. The next rule is that we give our best to it. We give our best to it. We give our best to these things. Together. In the next rule to that is that we see our leaders instead of God. We, 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 we hold them very highly for their work's sake. I said the next thing is that we see our leaders in the stead of God. And so we hold them very highly. We hold them very highly for the work's sake. Our leaders. We see them in the stead of God. And we hold them very highly. Very highly for the work's sake. And so if we hold them very highly, it therefore means... There's no place for disrespect, no place for familiarity, no place for talking back, no place for looking to the eyes, no place, no place, no place. He said, this is like a military camp. What, else, what were you thinking of before? It's a military camp. Were, we, were you expecting to serve God like civilians? No, we are soldiers of Jesus Christ. And not just soldiers, but good soldiers. We are good soldiers of Jesus Christ. And I told you who a good soldier is. I say a good soldier is that believer that does his master's will according to what is demanded and not according to what is convenient. Right? Demanded, not convenient. That, that believer that does the master's will according to that which is demanded, not according to that which is convenient. As a good soldier, we do it. And I hope you know that the, I have placed the blessing already. And I have placed the curse already. You heard when I said, when you do all, may nations serve you. If you will not, may the curses in this, that are not written in this book be on you. And everything you touch, let the curse locate them. It's true. Say, how can a man of God do that? Shut up! You don't understand scriptures. Shut up! You haven't studied, you are ignorant, you have not studied the word of God. Shut up! God called Moses and said, place the blessings and the curse, place them here, get two stones. Let the blessing be on Mount Eba and the curse on Mount Gareth. And let it be written out, let Israel know that whoever shall, shall walk according to this thing, let the blessing be on him. Don't, don't ever, shut up! He told you I'm, I'm wrong. Have you seen the scripture about that? Have you checked the scripture? And those words are gone out of my mouth and they're not coming back. I gave my life for this work and I will not take anything less than the best for this work. And for those of you who have been trained by deceived people, 
who listen to the wrong opinions and wrong counsels that are on God and on scripture, read your Bible and have corrected you and thought you many things that, that are heard out there as belief systems that are wrong. I've shown you a couple of times. They tell you you give God what you have. That's trash. That, that's what you do for your dogs and your pets. You give your dogs what you have. When God told, told Moses that Israel should build him a sanctuary, he said, let, the, let it be as, a man, as he wills. He said, let it be a, from a willing mind. However, when you're bringing it, it must be pure good. That means if you are willing, it's good. But your willingness doesn't mean you can bring anything. He said, let it be a pure good, because that's what I require. Then you have people saying now, a, a, a pastor should not tell people what to give. What are you talking about? Did I say I want to build a house to my monkey? I want to raise a, a, a project for the Lord. And you are telling me uh, you shouldn't tell what to bring. How dare you? Did I say I want to build a house myself? I want to build a house for the Lord. And these are the required things. I want to raise a generation. A generation that will teach the church its errors. That's the reason he called us a mirror to the church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Take your offering quickly. Father, we give you our offerings. Thank you for helping us to appreciate truth. Thank you for helping us to put away our, our emotions and sentiments. Helping us to accept the truth, live by the truth, embrace the truth, promote the truth. Teach us to promote the truth. Help us not to be as passive about the truth like Lot was in Sodom. Give us anger for, the, for errors. Fill our hearts with anger for errors. Help us to uphold values. Values that honor God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you. And I rebuke the devil concerning the corrections. I command you to be quiet. Even as he sense and throne this truth in their lives. To the glory and praise of your name Lord. In Jesus mighty name. And it just said, Say after me right now. Oh Lord God, I believe that you love me and that you offered your son Jesus Christ in my stead who was offered for my offenses and was raised back to life for my justification. Today, I ask for the Lord Jesus to be my savior. 
I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life of my spirit. And by faith, I receive the remission of sins of my soul. I receive eternal life of my spirit. And I declare I am born again. I declare the life of God is coming to my spirit. I declare I now belong in the family of God. And so I ask you, Father, go and repeat after me. Come and place your mark of ownership on me by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, today I become a member of the family of God. I ask for your presence into my life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. I have eternal life and I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. You pray that prayer, open your mouth right now and pray with me in the Spirit because you have just been baptized of the Holy Ghost right now. So how do I know? Psalms 81 verse 10, it says, open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. So the rest of you pray with me just in 60 seconds. Jelemon gradiso faradiga libro cose pradina gaizo frote gelo practice kazam brodi gabadina e capate la gloria perisato ibragina sacradi meredose frokitaba rabashi cabela endo cobra iracata labro co rabacashi beredidi poso freke dele manda crista rabababababoso in the name of jesus